would, go ahead and turn your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. The, the title of the message is A Step in the Wrong Direction. A Step in the Wrong Direction. And we're going to be looking at verse 26 and 27. It's at the bottom part of that chapter. It says this, it says, Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. Again, ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. And so, one tiny step might seem insignificant. But you can ask any soldier that a step in the wrong direction could set off a landmine. And it's the same way in a Christian life, in your life and in my life, if we take a step of compromise and take a step away from the Lord and away from the principles of God and the things of the Bible, we are stepping in dangerous territory. And to give you an example of that, I want to give you uh, King Solomon in 1 Kings. It reveals the tragic consequences of taking a step in the wrong direction. God had warned the kings of, of Israel not to take a step back towards Egypt. But so I'm going to read there. I'm going to read uh, Deuteronomy 17, 16. It says, But he shall not, and he's talking to the king now, and telling the king this. But he shall not multiply horses to himself, nor cause the people to return to Egypt, to the end that he should multiply horses. For as much as the Lord has said unto you, you shall henceforth return no more that way. And so God is telling them, you're not to take a step that way. You're not to take a step of compromise. Don't go back there. Don't have no dealings with them. Don't do that. But what happens is, is that Solomon decides that he's not going to listen to what God is saying to him, and he decides that he's going to take a, a small step in that direction. It tells us in 1 Kings 10, 28, and Solomon had horses brought out of Egypt. So he's doing exactly what God told him not to do. It doesn't seem like a, a huge thing, maybe, to us. Maybe to Solomon it didn't seem like that's a, a big step to do. I'm just getting some horses from over there. That's not a big deal. But God said, don't do that. Don't have demons with them. God said, that's trouble. Don't do it. But Solomon decides to do it anyway. And what happens is, is that because Solomon took that step in the wrong direction, he ends up marrying Pharaoh's daughter. And Pharaoh's daughter begins to get Solomon heading in the wrong direction. He's taken one step. Now that one step has led to many steps now. And now he's building palaces to false gods. And it wasn't long after that and through his life that Solomon begins to marry other pagan women. And listen to what God says in his word in 1 Kings eleven four. 4. For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned his heart after other gods. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his king. Now this all started with what would be considered by most people a small step. All I'm doing is this one thing. This can't hurt. In fact, that's what the devil always tells you, is that just a little bit won't hurt. Just a one small step won't hurt. In fact, you can handle this. It's not such a big deal. You can do it. But we see in Solomon's case and in everybody's case, what happens when you take one small step of compromise, we find Solomon way down the road in, in idolatry away from the Lord. And listen to what the Lord says about this situation. This is 1 Kings eleven nine. 9. It says, And the Lord was angry with Solomon, because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel. And consequently, the nation of Israel was torn apart, become weakened because of this step. And see, Satan's deadliest attacks are usually subtle. It's not always a big thing. It's just a small step. 
and see the destructive power of a step of compromise can do tremendous damage in your life. So let's break down compromise this morning. I want to give you some characteristics of compromise. And so the, the first thing is this. I've talked a little bit about it already. But the first thing is this, that that first step is the most dangerous. Because when you take one step in the wrong direction, that small step, that insignificant step, it's easy to underestimate the damage that can be done in your life after just that one small step. And another thing is this is that compromise, it isn't usually a, a, huge, a huge act of disobedience. Most of the time it's like a, a, a small step in your thinking, a small step uh, of uh, disobedience to God that leads you way down the road. Now, I don't want to get ahead of myself because I wouldn't really want to start talking about that, but I'm going to keep myself from doing it because I'm going to tell you about the reasons for compromise. You know, I've been told that I can come up with a reason about everything that I do or an excuse. And that's true, isn't it? Can't you? You can usually come up and say, well, uh, this is why I'm doing it. And we can usually try to justify why we do the things that we do. But the reasons for compromises are this. And one of them, I've got three reasons here. There's probably many more, but here's three that I felt like were right. There's the fear of rejection. Sometimes we are so afraid of being rejected by the world or by our friends or by society or by whatever it is. We're so afraid of, of rejection that we'll compromise the things of God just to try to fit in to a situation that, that doesn't matter anyway that they don't care about you anyway, it doesn't matter anyway, and we all reject the things of God because we're afraid of being rejected by the world. And so we want to fit in so bad because, see, the, the, the peer pressure of society today is so strong and it pulls so heavily, especially young people. I do realize young people that... that that, the, that you're being jerked about and pulled about by so many different directions. And so many times it's the fear of rejection. Another thing is the fear of conflict. We're afraid if we don't compromise and go along with the crowd, there's going to be conflict in our life. Uh, let me go ahead and tell you, give you a, a thing here. If you're serving God and you're really following Jesus, there's going to be conflict. Jesus said this. Jesus said, if they hated me, they're going to hate you. If you're really going to live for Jesus and really take a stand for the Lord, you can look in society right now and see how people are treated that follow God. Most folks, those, a politician that stands up and says, I'm against the things of the world. I'm going to stand with God. You see how they're treated. A, a movie star or or an athlete that stands up and says, well, I'm going to follow the things of God. You see how they're treated. So you can expect that there's going to be conflict. I'm going to tell you, I'm glad there is conflict. That lets me know that I'm serving right. Because I don't need to swim the way of the world. I'm to go against the grain of the world because that's what Jesus did. And he's my example and yours. But then there's also... We compromise sometime because of financial reasons. Because we'll have this thought, well, I, I can make so much more money if I, just, if I just do this wrong. They won't nobody know. If I, just, if I just fudge a little bit on this, I can make so much more money and I'll be the only one that knows. No, you're not. God knows exactly what's happening in your life, and if you will cheat that, and the devil can get you to cheat in that area of your life, there's no telling where else you will cheat. So we got the fear of rejection, the fear of conflict, and financial reasons is why most people compromise. But there is consequences to compromise. Because when you take one step in the wrong direction, I mean a step that you know is wrong, when you do that, it leads to ungodly um, actions and destruction. 
And again, like I told you earlier, the devil will always tell you one step won't make the difference. And I'm telling you, it will. Because every time you step across the line of compromise, you endanger yourself and you endanger others, no matter if you realize it or not. Because conceding in one area of your life, if you concede just in one area, it opens you up everywhere else in your life. If you give ground in one area, you may give ground in other areas. Each step that you take, each following step that you take of disobedience, Look at here. Look at me. When you take one step, every step after that gets a whole lot easier. A whole lot easier. And another thing is this. Every little accommodation that you make, it weakens your conscience, and it makes it easier to do other things or even worse things in your life. So when you compromise your standards or the standards of God, you weaken your character. You also hurt your personal testimony. And you hinder your prayer life. And you lose fellowship with God. Now listen to what I said. I didn't say you lose your salvation. I said you, you lose your fellowship with God. And it all started by one little step. And so what can we do? I mean, what is the, the answer to this, I mean, what, how can I combat compromise? What is it? How can we, what is it can we do? I mean, what can I do? And what can you do in combating compromise? And it comes from the scripture right there. In verse 26, it says, Ponder the path of thy way, and let all thy ways be established. Verse 27 says, Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. So the first thing is that you need to have a, a selected step. It says, Ponder the path of thy feet. So, you need to contemplate what you're about to do. You need to consider the things that you're doing. Because if you will ponder or consider the steps that you're taking, you won't go in the wrong direction when you begin to, to ponder them. And how do you begin to ponder that? I mean, how do you make sure that you've got a selected step? You start each day with prayer. You start each day with the Lord. I'm about to give you one of the most fantastic verses that you have ever read in your life. It is an awesome verse. And if you'll write this verse down, if you'll write it out on a card, if you'll stick it on the mirror of your car, if you put it somewhere and read it every day, it will help your life. Listen to Psalms 143, verse 8. Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning. For in thee do I trust. Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk. For I lift up my soul unto thee. Isn't that awesome? Listen to it again. Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning. For in thee do I trust. Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk. For I lift my soul unto thee. Every morning. Lift your soul unto Christ. Every morning, every day, start your day with the Lord. And when you do that, it'll give you a selected step to ponder what you're about to do. And then the next part of this in verse 26, it says, Let all thy ways be established. That means you need to have a steadfast step. That means that you need to be walking consistently and steadily, not being wavering, not being double-minded. And you use God's Word to, to be the standard of everything that you do. You decide your actions on what the Word of God says. And when you read the Word of God, and the Word of God says this, that is what you are set on. It is set in stone. God said this, that's what I'm going to do. Amen? Listen to Psalms 119.9. Wherewith shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereunto, or thereto, according to thy word. Wherewith shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto, according to thy word. Second Timothy tells us about the scripture. It tells us about the word of God. Listen to Second Timothy three sixteen and 17. 
It says, listen to this now. It says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. That means it's been breathed out by God. It's God breathed. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect. It means complete, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So in order to have a steadfast step, you need to be in the Word of God, know what the Word of God says, and stick to what the Word of God says. And then it says in verse 27, it says that you need to have a straight step. Because look what it says. It says, turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. So I'm never to compromise on Bible doctrine. See, we have found out in the last several years that some churches or Christians are, are wavering in their belief of the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, some churches are, are, are wavering on uh, Jesus' virgin birth, and some are wavering on the inerrancy of God's word. And what we find is churches that have done that are beginning to ordain homosexuals and things of that nature. I'm going to tell you, if you compromise on the things of God and on the word of God, there's no telling where you will end up in the doctrine that you follow. Because the word of God says that homosexuality is an abomination to God. There is no other way to slice that. There's no other way to interpret that. God says it's an abomination. But if you begin to compromise on the doctrines of the word of God, there's no telling what you may allow into the house of worship that you go to. And so that's not the church I want to go to. I want to go to the church where they stand on what the Word of God says. And they preach what the Word of God says. And they live by what the Word of God says. Because that's all that matters. And so you need a steadfast step. Psalms 119, 105. It tells us that we need to make God's Word a standard for our life. Why? Because in 119, 105 it says this. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. If you want to see the way to walk and have it lit up for you, it's his word that's going to guide you. If there's something is dark and you don't know what to do, it's the word of God that's going to light the way for you. I don't care if some preacher gets up. I don't care if you like them or not. If they stand in the pulpit and say, well, God doesn't mean this when he says this, or the Bible's outdated, and this is what we believe. That is not somebody you need to listen to, and you need to leave that church immediately. If they do not preach the pure word of God, I don't care who they are. And then you need to have a separated step. Because the last part of verse 27 says, Remove thy foot from evil. And so God is telling you, get away from evil. In fact, in 1 Thessalonians 5.22, it says, Abstain from all appearance of evil. If it looks bad, stay away from it. I mean, don't get, your place, don't get yourself in a place you ought not to be. So I'm not to walk where evil is. I don't know about you, but where I live, and I know where the bad places are. You know where the bad places are. Don't go there. And then it says this, and we to remove from ourselves from the evil place. If I'm in an evil place, I need to make tracks out of that place, right? And this is going to be the hard one for you. And it's the hard one for all of us. But I'm to remove myself from folks that practice evil. I've had to... to you, I'm going to say cut them. I didn't cut them with a knife, but I cut them out of my life. Folks in my life that were, I can say, friends that continuously go down an evil path. I can't condone that. I can't. Because the word of God says, remove thy foot from evil. Because see, if I'm going to be walking with you, we're going to be walking together. We're going to be walking step together, right? If you're living in evil, I can't walk that way. And if you're a Christian, you can't walk that way. You've got to remove yourself. See, God has put a 
GPS inside of you. God's positioning system, right? And he's called the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is going to guide you in the truth in the way you should walk. And if you are in a situation the Holy Spirit's telling you not to do something, you need to get out of that situation. Listen to what John 14, 26 says. And so you need to listen to the Holy Spirit. Listen to what it says. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So the Holy Spirit's going to say, this is what Jesus says about this. Don't go that way. Walk straight. Walk in the right way. Get away from evil. And so, what if I have found myself, or you have found yourself, in a compromising situation? I mean, you've compromised, and it's blowed up in your life. So that brings us to confessing compromise. See, that one small step has blown up in your life. Maybe it's led you down the road. Maybe you find yourself in the situation that Solomon was in, and if Solomon would have repented, God would have forgave him. But Solomon just kept walking in the wrong direction, building temples to false gods. But see, if you have taken a step in the wrong direction by compromising the things of God and your walk with God, I do have some good news for you because God offers forgiveness. And a fresh start. Jesus offers forgiveness to you and a fresh start. First John 1 John 1.9 says, If you will confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Now listen to that. If you confess. So the first thing you have to do is you've got to see your sin the way God sees it. If you confess your sin... Listen to what it says. It doesn't say don't confess. It doesn't say confess my sins. It doesn't say confess your neighbor's sins. If you want to be forgiven, if you confess your sins, if you will confess your sins, 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he, Jesus, is faithful to forgive us, is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It means you agree with what God says about it, Don't live another day trying to cover up the things that's in your life that's not right. Don't try to live another day that way. God will forgive you if you will come to him. And so, see your sin the way God sees it. It's wrong, it's sinful. God says it is, it's sin. If you took a step of compromise in the wrong direction, today's the day to make it right. And so, let sorrow and brokenness lead you to heartfelt repentance today.